Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going over the best Pokemon builds for you to farm money in the Ace Academy tournament post the epilogue update in Scarlet and Violet. So this has been quite a requested video here on the channel, so I hope it is helpful. But the Ace Academy tournament was one of the best ways and probably is still one of the best ways to farm money consistently and easy in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Yes, we do have access to the item printer now, which is accessible. You can go in and you can get a lot of high cost items very easily. It does require you to go out and click blueberry points as well as pokemon materials before you're able to use this this academy tournament does give you a bit of a one-up in this regard where you can just go into it freely with one pokemon build and there's no prep work to it and if you've got yourself a turbo controller you can just leave it set it away and let the money come in one of the issues that we've had recently with the latest dlc update for the indigo disc once you complete the terapagos story and catch it then the ace academy trainers do upgrade their levels increase making it slightly harder so the builds that we featured here on the channel that previously worked for this tournament no longer work and on top of that after the epilogue update which was the final piece of the jigsaw with the dlc content where you set out on that final journey with arvin namona and penny to get Petcherunt in Kitakami, then the Ace Academy does upgrade once again, increasing the levels of all the trainers in the Ace Academy tournament. But we have two builds we're going to feature here today. I've tested them extensively in the Ace Academy tournament after these updates, and they do work extremely well. So you're going to be able to use these two builds that we've got in today's video to farm through the Ace Academy tournament going forward, making sure that you've got as much money as you need in game. Some of the biggest differences you're going to see in the Ace Academy tournament, a lot of the trainers will have upgraded Pokemon, not only higher level Pokemon, but they will have different Pokemon that make some of the older builds very difficult to bring. Now, once you've complete the epilogue adventure in Kitakami, you're going to see Jack now appearing with a level 80 Victory Bell, a level 80 Arcanine, Swallowed, Mudsdale and Galarian Slowbro as well. And the highest level that Jack will have will be that 81 level Farigarath. And these level increases to around that level 80 are going to be across the board for the most part some trainers do even have a higher increase you're going to look at someone like mona which has the highest level pokemon in the hall of the ace academy tournament with their starter pokemon hitting level 87 depending on what starter you pick but the majority of namona's team are all going to be around mid 80s gita is another one that does have a huge increase to their levels with the king gambit their final pokemon being level 85 and even the dragapult being level 84 which is pretty much one of the fastest this Pokemon that you're going to see throughout the whole Ace Academy tournament. Penny's also taken a huge buff to her EV squad with her Ace Sylveon being level 85 when it does hit the field. And with Pokemon like Umbreon with Flareon as well can cause your Pokemon to trip up especially if you're leaving it in AFK. You don't want to set the AFK mode with your turbo controller up leaving a Pokemon in there only to come back and you're healing up at a Pokemon center. So the two builds that we're going to feature in today's video that are going to make life very easy for you to farm through the Ace Academy tournament if it's something that you would like to do in your game are going to be starting off with Curum White. Now this is a Pokemon that everyone should have access to in their games. They are readily available to catch in the DLCs. And you're going to be also able to trade these in from Pokemon Home if you've caught them in previous games. Of course, to get Curum White, you're going to need Reshiram and Curum. Once you've got them in game, to fuse them in Scarlet and Violet, you're going to need to first go to Porto Marinada, to the auction house there where you're going to be able to pick up the DNA splicer item. Now you'll come to this NPC here that has given you all of the other special evolution items that are accessible in the game, and you'll be able to take part in an auction for the DNA splicer. Once you have this item, it shouldn't cost too much from this auction. You can then use it when you have Curum and Reshiram in your party to fuse them into Curum White. Now, the Curum White build that we do have for this AFK farming method is going to be, obviously, the Terra typing doesn't matter. It has to be level 100 and make sure that you do hyper train all of those IVs excluding attack. That is the only one that doesn't really matter in this scenario. So make sure that you head up to Montenevera and you speak to the NPC next to the Abomasnow. Use bottle caps to make sure that all of those IVs are set to 31. 
Now, the big important thing that allows the Curum White to actually work through this AFK method is the held item, which is going to be that metronome. So for those of you that don't know how the metronome item works, essentially every time you consecutively use a move, it's boosting the base power of that move by 20% the next turn that you come to use it and maxing out at 100% base power boost after five turns. Essentially, the first time you use Ice Beam with the Curum White, it's going to be that 90 base power the next turn if you use ice beam again you'll then activate the metronome item and get a 20 percent base power boost on the ice beam essentially turning it into a 108 base power move that continues all the way up until you've used the move five consecutive times tapping out at that 100 percent base power boost which will then equate to the ice beam being 180 base power attack on that sixth turn and then on top of that you've got the stab boost same type attack bonus which will essentially mean that you've got a 270 base power attack ice beam on that sixth turn making this a very strong attack and essentially one of the key aspects to why you can knock out those very strong higher level pokemon when it comes to the end of the battle against a lot of these Ace Academy trainers. I've already mentioned Ice Beam. You're going to already guess the set for this. You only need one single move and it is going to be that Ice Beam. Make sure that you PP max the Ice Beam out just in case you need it. You're not essentially going to need to PP max the move out, but it's always been safer than sorry. Just PP maxing that out. Ability is going to be Turbo Blaze on the Curum White and its EV spread is going to be 196 HP EVs. 4 defense EVs, 252 special attack EVs, and then 56 speed EVs with a modest nature. So they are the, the EV investment that you're going to have on your Kuramite. The stats should look exactly like this that are showing on your screen right now. And with that 56 speed EV investment, you're going to outspeed everything in the Ace Academy tournament, apart from Gita's Dragapult. But going to outspeed that means you're going to lose a lot of bulk essentially meaning it's not as an effective set. And even if, in the worst case scenario, Gita's Dragapult does critical hit you twice in a row with the Dragon Darts, you're still going to be able to beat her. There's nothing on a team that you're not going to be knocking out or outspeeding, so you don't really even need to worry about that critical hit if that does occur, because in return, you're going to knock out the Dragapult with the Ice Beam anyway. You're so deep into the battle. You've got that 80% boost to the base power on Ice Beam at that stage of the game anyway. And then all that's left to come in after that is the King Gambit, which is the flying terrestrialization, which I don't know, doesn't make much sense to me, but it means you're going to be able to outspeed it and pick up the knockout very easily with the Ice Beam anyway. So even against Gita, which is one of the more tricky ones that you could say where a Pokemon does outspeed you and you could have a few issues, that isn't going to make any difference at all. And other trainers that you would maybe say could cause you an issue, like Jack with the Arcanine, even after critical hit close combat and the Glarian Slowbro activating its quick claw ability and using a power gem, which then critical hits, you're still not going to be knocked out with this EV investment. So even against Jack, where he's got a couple of Pokemon at different periods throughout that battle, which could cause you issues, you're still going to be super fine against him with this particular build and the metronome item attached. Salvador is another one to mention because he is going to have that Alolan Sand Slash, which does resist the Ice Beam. You're not going to be able to pick up a clean knockout on that, so we'll be able to get an Iron Head on you. But again, even in the worst case scenario where it does critical hit you, you're not going to be in any danger of getting knocked out and you're always going to outspeed it. So you're not going to ever flinch from the Iron Head. So you don't really need to worry about that, but you will take damage throughout that matchup. And Penny with this particular build is not an issue at all. Of course, you're not going to be picking up the knockout onto the Umbrian first turn when that comes out. But because you're not knocking it out in one turn, you're going to get the 20% boost essentially before the Flareon comes in and you're going to use two Ice Beams on the Flareon. You're going to be able to take a Flare Blitz pretty easily from that Flareon. So by the time that you get to the Sylveon, you're already going to have that 100% boost. So the Sylveon is made quick work of. You're not even going to have to contend with taking a Moonblast from that Pokemon. And also the Vaporeon, by that stage, you're going to have enough boosts with your metronome item where the Vaporeon is very easy to take down as well. So that is the Curum White build. Again, a Pokemon that you're going to have easy access to in your games if you've got the DLCs or you might have had it from previous generations where you can trade it in from Pokemon Home. And it is going to be one of those Pokemon where you can use your Turbo Controller, set it away and it's going to just work and get money for you while you sleep 
work, do whatever you want where you're not paying attention to the games and you're not really going to have any worries about that money grind any longer after these updates. Now it isn't the only option that we've got going into this video because the other one is going to be Arceus. Now I do understand not everyone has access to Arceus but if you played Brilliant Diamond, Shine and Pearl or you've got a copy of Pokemon Legends Arceus itself, there are two games, recent games on the Switch where you can obtain Arceus and then transfer it in from Pokemon Home. But you might have access to all the mystery gift events that took place a while ago and have access to Arceus through that, meaning you're going to be able to get it in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. But this is why we've got two options going into today's video because not everyone has access to Arceus. But if you do want to use Arceus in the Ace Academy tournament, it is going to be a very consistent method. I left this running for almost two days and no problems at all. With this build, you're going to be able to run through the Ace Academy tournament, all of the trainers after the epilogue update pretty pretty effectively with this particular Arceus so a level 100 again make sure it is hyper trained of course you don't need to worry about that attack stat again but everything else should be 31 level 100 and the held item is going to be the pixie plate making it a fairy type Pokemon the only move that you're going to need on the Arceus is judgment and just make sure again you do PP max it it is just safe for PP maxing not essential but it will just make it a bit easier the ability of course can't be changed it is multi-type and the EV spread is going to be very straightforward 252 EVs in HP 252 EVs in special attack and the rest at four remaining EVs or six remaining EVs just put into the special defense stat there you don't need any speed investment with this Arceus at level 100. It is going to outspeed everything in the Ace Academy tournament, even that Dragapult on Gita's team. So you're going to be able to just run through Pokemon very easy. And even the Pokemon that do resist the fairy type attacks like the Arcanine and the Galarian Slowpoke and other Pokemon that resist fairy type attack, you're still going to be hitting for very effective damage. And with that HP investment in its bulk, you're going to be able to take a flurry of attacks from all of these trainers even when you go up against penny and the flareon's going to be able to get a flare blitz off you you're going to knock it out with two judgments and then even if penny's sylveon does get a number of moon blasts off against you you've got the bulk to be able to knock it out before it can close the game out with what would be a quick attack normally so the Arcus, very solid choice going into this but something else that i just did want to cover in this video alongside the Kurum White with that metronome item that are going to make it so easy for you to go into the Ace Academy tournament now, even after the updates and have success farming for as much money as long as you want in the games without having to worry about getting blueberry points, getting Pokemon materials over and over again, just to utilize the item printer. I'm not denying that that is one of the best ways to farm money in the games right now. And I've been using it and I haven't really had to rely on the Ace Academy tournament very much but because this was such a requested video here on the channel I did want to put some time and effort in and I have done over the last week and I feel very confident about both of these builds going in after the epilogue update that they're going to be the most consistent Pokemon that you're going to have confidence in leaving setting your turbo controllers away letting this just run through and rack up as much money as you need in Pokemon Skull and Violet so that is everything for today's video friends I hope you found it useful if you have your own builds that you've had a lot of success with do share them down below they'll be useful for other trainers who are wanting to use this facility in the games after the updates and I hope you find this one useful if you do if you have please drop a like on the video and make sure you do hit that subscribe button turn on notifications to stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Skull and Violet content thank you so much for tuning in friends have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you all in another video very soon. So until then, take care and bye-bye.